Hi, I'm Steve Everson from Nearly Wild, and I'm, I'm here today with Steve from... Uh, Sector 39. Sector 39. So, um, Steve, tell us a little bit about Sector 39. What do you do, and where are you based? Uh, well, we're based in Clan Rider. Um, Clan Rider, just for those people who absolutely. struggle with these words, that's actually in uh, North Mid Wales, so the northern part of Powys. Yeah, sorry, Steve. that's okay. Um, we're teaching, training organisation really, um, and we specifically facilitate training in permaculture. Um, we specialise in teaching permaculture design courses, which is a two-week residential sort of special uh, intensive course. Hmm. And um, here in Paris, we're working th through the European Union, through the, the R Wine Fund, Leader Fund. Um, we're working with the high school to explore how we can bring permaculture design ideas and thinking into the mainstream curriculum. Wow. Um, and, um, and then we're also working on having the same conversation across the community and actually kind of, you know, saying, is, look, we're being told we're entering a period of climate emergency. We have the framing of the Paris Climate Agreement, which tells us it's going to, we have 30 years of transition to get to a zero carbon economy. Uh, and and, and um, as a community, we need to be talking about how that's going to impact on us and, and respond to that. Really so interesting. Yeah. yeah. So just so just um, there's not everybody will be familiar with all of the terms. Steve. Sure, so, sure. Um, just uh, for those people who haven't come across it before, the term permaculture. Um, if you Google it or whatever search tool engine mm -hmm. you use, you'll probably find lots of information. Um, but it's mainly to do, I think it's right in saying, to do with um, helping people think about planning and how they work with their lives, satisfy their needs, but in a way that works with the natural world, with the ecological system. Is that a fair representation, Steve, or would you...? Yeah, no, I mean, there's lots of different ways to explore it. So I said to you earlier, permaculture is the intersection between economics, mm -hmm. how we meet our needs, and ecology of the reality that we're part of a living system and right now we so far we haven't really fully understood that and we've behaved in a way in which we have we, we've eroded into the natural capital of the planet and we've seen that as being an income stream rather than understanding that we're you know that we, we, we're we've actually eroded the system that we depend on that's right so yeah. picking up on that i mean i know um, so permaculture fixes that if you like it makes it right. run it in another direction so right. we take developments in a way in which it becomes regenerative and restorative it rebuilds topsoils it puts back forests it helps put back the nature and biodiversity whilst also helping us make a living meet our needs brilliant so that's really helpful steve because one of the things we've been looking at in nearly wild and then um obviously there, mm. there's a number of interviews with people about is this whole thing about that economic bit that way people trade so if we're going to change um, the way we manage our land the way we use our natural resources so that they work much more in tune with the natural world um, and I know some people are, are you know, moving towards things like the rewilding and the wilding movement mm. a lot of it is really about working with natural processes and that's really what you've fundamentally been doing yeah um, and uh, I'm thinking sort of particularly if we picked here in Powys are there particular things that you think would help if you like businesses people who are getting going trying to work with the natural world mm. but also to earn a living from it do you think there's things that are missing or that we could help with in maybe in marketing or in other ways of linking those businesses together sure that's a big question though, sorry it touches on yeah. a lot of things but this so look one one thing that I really like about permaculture and what's strong about it, really strong about it, is it's it's a unifying concept. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it makes otherwise unlike unrelated enterprises understand that they're actually all part of a bigger picture. Yes, and 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 part of that bigger picture is the restoration and of, you know restoring the natural world and, and 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 undoing some of the damage that we've done, some of the erosion that we've done to the natural world. And so whether if say you're a food producer or we're your campsite producer yeah, whatever but, yeah. and let's say I'm producing food on a small scale they suddenly realize that we can bring those two those two things together so people are having a, an immersive in nature experience whilst actually eating locally produced in season organically grown food that's helped create local jobs which is all part of that bigger picture of absolutely reg what a regenerative economy might look like yeah um, so if we model our natural systems 
is natural systems are typified by lots and lots of dynamic relationships. Everything's connected and they're generally quite localized as, as well and they're very responsive to change. Yes. Well, that's a great model for, an, for, for a local economy too, you know, yeah. and, and instead of buying in suppliers from distant supply chains where you don't see the impact that that's having on society or having on, on the environment, mm. if, you, if, you, if you're linking these things together. So there's, there's an enormous um, amount of synergy to be created between businesses if they can start thinking in the same way. Right. And, and, and per, sorry, permaculture in that way is a kind of a unifying concept. Uh, so if those businesses are effectively a, a more part of a network and thinking of business like a network instead of my business selling to a client only. Yes. Then they're going to be more, they're going to be stronger. Yeah, think about yourself as part of a much more dynamic and interconnected ecosystem. Mm. And then another really central idea in permaculture, principle number six, is that there is no waste. Yes. Right? Nature produces no waste. There's no big piles of leftover stuff in nature. Everything is reincorporated back into the productive ecosystem as a whole. Yes. So when you separate businesses out, if you happen to have horses, you end up with a big pile of manure because they produce a lot of it. And then you start to see that as a waste product. Mm -hmm. Go, oh, I need to get rid of this. Rather than going, no, this is a really, really valuable resource. You just need to build, you haven't built the right kind of relationships in your community. Yep. If you've got a big pile of manure not doing anything, you haven't got enough friends. You know what I mean, you need to yeah. connect with growers, horticulture projects, community gardening, allotments and all that sort of stuff and find somewhere for that that's a resource a very valuable resource and it needs to go somewhere and it needs to be local because it's not worth it's heavy so it's not worth putting on a trailer and driving it 30 miles you need to it needs to be used locally interesting so the, this is quite important but you um, get the sense that um in a way, there's, it's, people often think of nature-based businesses and activities as being for the visitor. And actually, what you're describing is a much more integrated economy. It's not just mm. about, it's a network that isn't just for people coming to visit that want to find out. It's actually about local people finding out as well. Sure. I mean, ultimately, I come from a farming background. So I come from an environment, you know, and again, we live in a farming area, so we're, pro we're producers here. Mm. And, and, and in the modern economy, producers can build very direct and personal relationships with their customers, with their clients. So if you're producing something that's of high provenance or is environmentally and socially, you know, whatever, adept or whatever, then that, that, that gives, you, gives you a real attraction. Yes. And, and by collaborating together, we can generate local markets for a wi wide range of, of goods and services, which we could produce here in Wales Excellent. at really, really high quality. And, and then, of course, with the abilities we've got now with social media, um, we've got phenomenal ways of reaching diverse markets of people mm. and helping them enjoy what we've got in somewhere like Paris mm. when they come, but also when they go away, so that those, those if you like, those green supply chains are then strengthened yeah. and developed further. Yeah. You know, and I'll, I'll just throw this in, because it, we're just chatting a bit about what Sector 39 does. So we have a real local focus to what we do here. Right. Um, but through our local focus, what they actually did was it connected us to a local charity based in Clanvartlin, Dol and Fermio, who actually build relationships between Welsh farmers and farmers in East Africa. Mm. So we started hosting visits. We hosted some visits for some uh, of our uh, Ugandan colleagues through the Dol and Fermio network. And, of course, then they invited us out to go and see what they were doing in Uganda. And so we connected then with the sort of progressive leading edge of sort of farming and organic movement in, in, in East Africa. Mm. And, um, and we've now developed a specialism in delivering training for East African farmers who want to learn about permaculture. So it's a really interesting, so we've got this really local focus, but we've also got this global sort of dimension to our work. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if we go back to the early days of the green movement and everything, it was always about think global, act local. Yes. Or, you know, and, and by acting local, we're learning lots of useful th loads of things, which actually we can share globally as well. And I think that's, um, I was, I was at CAT a couple of weeks ago. They had a climate emergency. Set for alternative technology. Sorry, yes. Sorry, Sorry. Sorry, I was just thinking, yes, I'm just yeah. thinking very locally in terms of it. We're very lucky here in Paris, in mid-Wales, that we have, um, yeah, the Centre for Alternative Technology, which is really the world's first really deep green think tank mm -hmm. and, and, and a sort of living laboratory of environmental ideas and, and, and it's become a sort of public visitor centre. But it's had a sort of throughput of people over many, many years who've worked there and volunteered there and yeah. stuff like that. So we're very lucky to have that here. And, and, and they convened a conference uh, two, three weeks ago for people who were um, trying to respond to this rising level of, you know, of, of awareness, if you like, from climate emergency and, and, and so forth. And, and one of the speakers there was um, Jane Davidson, 
Right. Who was um, in the first Welsh Assembly government and who led on the uh, Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. Absolutely. And Wales is the first country to have a minister whose job it is to think about the impact of development on future generations. And yes. that, that's really cool. That's really far, far thinking. And there's, from her talk, I remember the thing, there were seven areas at which they look about how this impacts. Yes. And, and the seventh area is about understanding you know, the first six were very kind of like, say, locally focused, but the seventh one is about understanding that Wales is still an international na nation and is part of a global community and wants to operate and relate to on, on that level. Yeah. So we're trying to get that proportion in our business, and I think that's a, a really important for the rest of uh, people in, in Wales to realise this. Yeah. People are watching from around the world, and Britain has been seen as a place of innovation, and you know, we exported industrialisation and coal and steel and capitalism around the world right so um, I, I feel that within that we have a huge responsibility to remain on that leading edge and in terms of innovating in terms of climate responses to climate emergency regenerative development permaculture um, uh, nature-based solutions all this sort of stuff is this is the areas that we need to be trying to aspiring to lead in or to make as big a contribution to as we can. No, that's brilliant, Steve. I'm sorry, Steve. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to have to stop you because okay, right. I think um, we're going to have more conversations and, and hopefully do some future interviews with Steve um, to build on some of what we've been hearing about mm. today. But I think this point of this relationship with nature-based activity, the relationship with nature and how we're building, Steve's mm. really important point about working locally, also linking globally, and the way that new social media and new opportunities allows mm. us to bring networked businesses together to actually help nature and help those businesses help those things flourish um, the more information at the end of the video um, for steve's work in sector 39 both here in the uk and his overseas work um, and i'll i'm sure you'll find lots of other innovative and interesting information there because i know steve's involved in a lot of things um, meanwhile, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Steve. Really interesting interview. And um, I look forward to our next one uh, yeah. in, in, uh, in, in the future. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, subscribe. If you didn't like it, leave a reason in the comments as to why.